Um, and then after that started getting more into like the punk, the shoegaze and that kind of stuff. Nice. Uh, how would you describe shoegaze? If you had to do an it's like a like a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> This video is brought to you by U Gears. We'll hear more about them later, but for now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and my guest today, I met at uh, Backstage Bar and Billiards, or Triple B as the locals call it, at uh, the Madzilla Haddonfield Je Jexero. It was a great show. I did a review of that. You can find that you know, down on the list. Um, they're a fairly new band formed in 2022. They specialize in post-punk and indie rock, and their next show, which will probably be before this video comes out, is at Eagles Airy Hall, uh, which I also did a review of, on uh, March 7th. Please welcome to the channel, Dantes. Say hi, guys. So hi. What's up, yo? Did I say that right? Yes. yes sir. Noise. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. cheers, cheers. Yes, tap. That's smooth. Smooth, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good vodka? That was smooth. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Potato water. So, <laughs> first off, thank you for coming on the channel. I appreciate you. Thanks for having us. Mm -hmm. No worries. If you want to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address down in the description, or click the Room 6 social media link, and that's where you can find all sorts of ways to find me and support the channel, including room6.shop, which is where I have merch like this, as you remember to rock today, make music not excuses, I make music, what's your superpower, all those cool things. Um, I've been seeing an uptick in uh, merch purchases, so thank you very much, I appreciate you. And uh, it's, it's nice to know people will be rocking the, you know, showing, like, I support the local scene. And it all goes to help the scene. Now then, back to my guests. Number one. Why Dantes? So I pretty much came up with that. Um, it is based on the protagonist of my favorite novel, Count Monte Cristo, Edmund Dantes. Wow, yeah, yes it is. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Because, um, of course, I'm sh you must get missed misnamed all the time we as Dante's. Are, we are also known as Dante's. Yes. So. Well, uh, you'll note the accent. It's going in the right direction because I, I was checking. I was like, I'm going to have to ask. Because, <laughs> yeah. Um, and that is, that is, I don't know why, as a 50-year-old, it's heartwarming to know that like, someone's paying <laughs> attention to the classics. So good job. Thank you. Um, from there, I wanted to ask, this is kind of like for each individual person you can answer in whatever order you want. Let's talk earliest musical influence. And by that I mean, what is that first memory you have of, I want to do that? Uh, I guess I'll go first. Uh, well, I grew up with my parents listening to like 80s mm -hmm. and early rock, so mostly like the Beatles was the first thing, which is very, you know, oh, of course it's the Beatles, but at the same time, like, it just made sense to me, like, these guys do good music, and it sounds cool, it's influential, and at one point I was just like, well, that's something I would like to do, but at the same time, I didn't really think music was going to be my thing until I first heard Radiohead, I'm pretty sure. Radiohead okay, because I was like, yeah, your stuff sounds just like the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was waiting for that, so, uh, next um well i guess i started well my dad plays guitar so he had a big influence on me but he likes like classic rock and stuff my first like rock hero i guess was peter chris kiss i'm a huge kiss fan but so i had like the whole kissology you know tapes and stuff so i would rewatch it all the time and then but i never uh got serious about music until like after high school nice yeah, yeah. um before we move on i'm so sorry Mm -hmm. For those of you that don't know who Dantes is, thank you for watching. Go ahead and introduce yourselves and tell them who you are and what you do in the band. I completely sk <laughs> skipped that step. Uh, I'm G. I sing and play guitar. I'm Noah. I play drums, percussion. I'm Richard. Uh, I play bass and I sing a little bit. Cool. I'm, I'm Josh. I'm the host. So, uh, you, I think we were... Were you done with your... Um, yeah, I just uh, started playing... Um, 
seriously after high school. That's when I started meeting more people my age that played music. And then I was like, wow, I could really do something with this. And then, yeah, we met and we've been jamming since. Mm -hmm. Um, my dad was also a musician. Um, so I first kind of got that spark from him. Um, I picked up bass specifically because I was always drawn to the things that no one else wanted to do. As you do. Um, mm -hmm. Like sixth grade, when I was like signing up for like beginner orchestra, I was like, well, no one wants to do this. So I guess I'll do it. Like someone <laughs> has to. Um, so then from there, I got really into Iron Maiden specifically and Steve Harris, the bass player of that band. Um, and that was like the coolest thing in the world to me. He's a monster on bass. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, so yeah, from there, um, I've always like stuck with the bass, um, was a huge jazz kid in high school. Um, and then after that started getting more into like the punk, the shoegaze and that kind of stuff. Nice. Uh, how would you describe shoegaze? If you had to do it, it's like a, like a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like the running joke, like my bloody Valentine. It was like, it's just like a, me a mesh of, of I hear people use the word texture to describe shoegaze a lot. And I feel like it's like a really... It's like, I feel like it's a really like almost pretentious way to describe it, but it kind of makes sense. It almost um, sounds hipsterish. Like, yeah, well, it's like, oh, it's the, it's, it's nuanced, texture so it's of like layers. Yeah. And, but that's like, I mean, that's part of like, I got a chance to see my bloody Valentine in, in, in person a few years ago and it was literally just like a wall of sound and it was like, just like, you could really feel everything. It was, it was yeah. Right. Um, one thing I noticed when I go to shows and if you see me at one of your shows, you'll probably see me with those big old bright orange earplugs in mm -hmm. the foam ones. Mm -hmm. I use them because they're free or they're cheap. But um, what I've discovered, uh, I mean, I'm take I'm usually standing like right near the speakers, getting photos and video and stuff. And and I'm 50, so I'm, I'm like trying to hold on, you know. Yeah. But one thing I've discovered is it cuts a lot of the highs and lows out. So I'm hearing lyrics all of a sudden, and I'm mm -hmm. hearing hi hats and stuff for the, the, the like thrash metal. You know, you're like yeah. this is yes, I can hear everything clearly. And I wonder, I wonder. if if more people, you know, I feel like more people should have them in to protect their hearing, but also, like, you're going to hear more of what the audience is, or what the um, artist is about, because you're not hearing all this, whatever, reverbs and stuff in the yeah. room. So, just, just food for thought. <laughs> it's something I've really, like, if I don't have them in now, it's just noise. Mm -hmm. Even I've though... Oh, go ahead. I was just saying, I've had that a few times where, like, I'm the same thing. I'm like, damn, I'm turning 28. I was like, I probably should, like, sooner rather than later start, like, worrying about <laughs> yeah. my hearing. Yeah. For, I'll for tell some you. experience of, like, oh, I'll, my God, like, I'll, I'll live tell music you, sounds so I've had, better. I've had musicians on here, they've been doing it for decades, just decades, and they're amazing, and they're you're just like, I want to be like you. And they're like, earplugs, where, mm -hmm. for, where, where are the earplugs? Don't care. Don't worry about it. Look, where are the earplugs? <laughs> <laughs> It's and always, then, like, whenever I go to, especially, like, a local show in a place like Eagles Area or, or one other, mm -hmm. like, I'll see, like, maybe, like, one or two other people wearing earplugs. I'm like, my man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it was like masks. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, thanks for caring. <laughs> um, and the only time I ever take them out is if I'm performing. Because mm -hmm. then, you know, I'm, I'm on the other side of things. But cool. Um, from there, I wanted to talk, how long, you've been doing this since 2022, but it's, it's has it been a year yet? Uh, I think we're coming on about it yeah a year in this like current iteration yeah um Te ah. technically i i started this project because i've been making music by myself for a minute i made a solo album in, when i was living in utah for a year and i had some songs on there that i still wanted to keep alive somehow so i hit up richard which we played in a band together in high school called major problem Still on Spotify, still good. And I was like, well, you know, come jam, we'll figure something out. And at first, we were looking at like a dance punk, we'll use um, drum machines kind of thing. Yeah, like trigger pads and just to figure that out at everything. first. Right. But then I'd also played with Noah recently in a, in a band for a few minutes, and we took him from that band pretty much and said, hey, you're going to play drums for us. And after that, we started doing the whole post-punk indie thing that, well, I've, I've always been a big fan of post-punk, so. Um, we're going to take a quick little break here because uh, I'm going to empty, we need a booze break. But also, I think we have a message from Future Josh, so uh, stick around. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. You know what I love most about things like guitars? The engineering. All these parts separately do nothing but, together, 
They make something capable of inspiring and motivating creative thought and emotional content. We need emotional content. That's why I love U-Gears. Their amazing 3D self-assembly models are fun to assemble as well as educational. They can also serve as decorative pieces. Although the kits come with clear step-by-step -step instruction, they can also be used as puzzles. Inspired by steampunk fantasy, there's a clear view of all the moving components, including gears and pendulums, and it creates a unique, unforgettable, and fascinating look at everyday, and not so everyday, machinery. To top it all off, 10% of every purchase is being donated to the people of Ukraine who have been affected by the current conflict. Just for watching this video, and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get 10% off your order. Just enter coupon code SHOP10 at checkout. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to you, Gears, for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show, shall we? We're back! So, I hope that sponsor spot interested you. If it did, the best way you can support the channel is click the link down in the description when you're done watching this. Now then, I wanted to talk about other acts that you've been involved in. Um, before you got into Dante's, or, or, are, or are you currently, you know, double dipping and doing some other stuff? So, like I kind of mentioned earlier, uh, the first real band I was in was with Richard in high school, and I was named a major problem. That came about from, I think, I I came in that late, actually. So, Richard, how did that come about? It was, it was a lot of just, like, friends of friends of, like, uh, one guy was like, I need a bass player, a drummer, a guitar player. So I'm going to reach out to the only people I know that do that stuff. All right. Um, and then, um, yeah, through that, we like were able to make a lot more connections throughout the scene and like work with a lot of other bands. And some bands that are like still playing. Um, bands like like I, this Musket Vine still thing. Yeah. Yeah. So like some of those guys are just like, oh yeah, we played a show with them like ten years ago. It's kind of crazy to think about, but um, yeah, it was just like friends of friends. We just we needed people to pick up a pick up a guitar or whatever and right yeah i thought it was funny you mentioned about the bass and how well no one else is doing it i have had so many bass players with that exact same story it's like well i didn't know how to play bass but the, you know they needed somebody so i figured it out i think i like a, another joke i hear a lot is that like all bass players were guitar players and they just had to pick up the bass because like i started with the bass um and then like i became a little bit of a guitar player but like have mainly stuck with the bass um but yeah it's just Someone has to do it, so why not right. me? Uh, there's a band in town called Leaving Springfield. They they literally were my like third interview ever, and um, they for a long time were just a two piece: the drummer mm -hmm. and then the guy on guitar. And you would be listening, you're like, you're like what's something missing? Where, no, why am I hearing a bass? Oh. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> he had modded his guitar, so the top two strings were bass oh, notes. That's cool. And the rest of it was guitar, and he had he had a way of playing, and where it was it was all there at the same time, and, and it really I was like, that's and now they have a bass player, so it, it, it opens things up more for a three piece. Mm -hmm. But um, speaking of leaving Springfield, I mark your mark your calendars. This is the first time I've mentioned this. May sixth, Revenge of the Sixth for you Star Wars nerds. Room six is putting on my second ever showcase of former Room 6 guests, and it's at Hennessy's Tavern down in Fremont. You all know where it is, hopefully. Um, that's going to be May 6th, 7 p.m. start time, and basically it's five acts that have been on the show. Maybe they've performed in kind of a stripped-down fashion up in Room 6. This will be a chance for them to come out, play full volume, and also you can, you'll can you be able to see you know a whole varied group of, of performers, anything from... A singer songwriter to you know pop punk band to rapper to thrash metal it, who knows but, but uh, I'm still nailing down all the acts so uh, save the date March sixth I'm sorry May sixth at uh, 2023 we're gonna have a good time and uh, watch this space if you haven't subscribed already please consider doing so and uh, ring the bell so you'll be notified when uh, you know I make announcements moving on other acts um, yeah well like G said we're I started playing with my dad, of course, and I would be like in his little bands or whatever. But once I met G and the other band that he was filling in for, he was on bass. It was this band, Casual Comfort. 
which they needed a bass player. We need a bass player. I didn't know how to play bass. <laughs> I so didn't I know like, Richard at the time. Taylor's missing a pattern here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we did that. We actually went to the Battle of the Bands in Henderson. Um, I forget what this year. This last 2021? one? 2021? Oh. No. The, it, was, the one yeah, it was like yeah. the first shows like the first coming one. out of the pandemic. Yeah. Right. Um, they're, they're looking, uh, they're starting to book bands now for it. This, yeah. This year. yeah. Yeah, we saw that. Um, I'm not too excited, but they were like considering <laughs> it. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, a thousand bucks, a thousand bucks. <laughs> True. But True. then, um, well, I had been playing also with my buddy uh, David. We're in the forest. Mm -hmm. It's a different uh, heavy metal project. That's yes, uh, and I was going to reach out to them about mm -hmm. yeah. coming on the show. So yeah, yeah. soon we'll we'll hopefully right be able to do that. And then you're playing Triple B. Yeah, Triple yeah. B is this, actually the same week as uh, our March seventh. So it's going to be March eleventh. So a little plug for them. Nice. Um, and I was also in the Futilitarian Librarians, which you went to that. That's why you look familiar. Yeah. <laughs> yes, at the space. Yeah. yeah. One of the best band names ever. <laughs> if, you, if you can get it down, you, you'll remember it always. Yeah. yeah. But um, I had to step down from drumming duties for that band just because it was too much Like to start a new job. And I want to like start doing what we were doing with that band with these bands. Gotcha. So, And that's the, th that's the lesson for you new musicians out there. You need a job. <laughs> get a job. Yeah, you know, <laughs> until you get to that point where you're like, wait a minute, I can quit. You, you need a job. Don't. It, there's no shame in it. Every if, if if you want gear, you want to be able to afford things like you know flyers and stuff. You, you need a job mm -hmm. or someone to pay for. You know, like parents. I don't know. <laughs> cool. Um, I want to ask. We we kind of touched on this briefly, talking about uh, another another act, so to speak, but I wanted to ask a question. It's a, it's a usual interview question, and I apologize in advance. How would you define your band's musical style? Elevator pitch, go. Uh, we're a mix between Interpol, uh, I'd say a little influence from Joy Division, for sure, and right now we're leaning a little bit towards, uh, I'd say, Midwestern emos, like Tidal Fight. In basement actually We're, we've been covering basements uh covet here and there which has been a favorite of mine for past year now nice yeah that's pretty succinct and if you know any of those bands it kind of dials you in to because i figured you just look down and say post-punk and indie rock <laughs> <laughs> right on um a couple more questions here and then we're going to see g upstairs stick around we're going to see g perform a couple songs acoustically uh from uh, dantes and if you want to be on the channel, like I said, hit me up. But more importantly, if you know somebody that you think, hey, we should get them on the channel, also hit me up and or have them reach out to me because I, I do get a lot of word of mouth uh, traffic through here, and uh, that's awesome. So we want to really get the, the local scene growing and um, make it a lot bigger and stronger than it currently is. So cool. Second to last question. I want to talk early, uh, favorite show memory as Dantes. I know there hasn't been a whole bunch, but do you have any favorite show memory where things went crazy, things went whatever? Well, I think we can talk about our last <laughs> yeah, show yeah, on Friday. Please. Uh, <laughs> Tell the people. So we played with uh, For the Culture for the first time, and when they first told us our set times, we were like, ooh, it might not work out well because uh, Richard got out at work at the same time we were set to play. And they're done that? Yeah. Luckily, though, I think he got out, like, 30 minutes early. Mm -hmm. But it was still, like, cutting it close because it's a 30-minute drive to the location. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're setting up. We're wondering if he'll make it on time. <laughs> he says he's on his way. We're like, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're playing three songs without him at most, and hopefully he'll just come in on the For rest of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> But honestly, I, I think we still sound pretty good. Everyone who was there seemed to enjoy it for the most part. And mm -hmm. Please welcome to the yeah. stage, special guest. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, because it was like, I was trying to leave work and it was like, someone was like, yeah. was like hey, we got to talk about something real quick. And I'm like, do we like have right now? It's like, that's crazy. Because I'm like, she's like, yeah, we'll go on at like 6, 6, 15, whatever. And I'm like, that's crazy. I'm like trying. I'm like, yeah. like you know, my, my body language. I'm like, that's crazy. Uh, wow. Okay. Yeah. We can talk about a Monday, right? Yeah. Really? Um, and of course, I was like deep, as like deep in Henderson as I could be. Mm -hmm. So it's just like. One thing after another is like, look at my maps. There's like three accidents on the yeah. 95, whatever else. But nice. 
How, um, well, how many songs did you do that set? I think we did six. Okay. Okay. I think I was only there yeah. for three. So I was there for okay. two and a half. Because <laughs> depending on the band, it could be like a, a thirty minutes set could be four songs. So right. Uh, yeah. I was I was just like that kind of sucks that you went to all the trouble and effort for you know a song or two. But yeah. And um, the sound guy gave us like fifteen. Yeah, he was very minutes. helpful. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Frank. This was where? Uh, this was for the culture. No, no. What? Where? The venue. It's a union the house, union but house? it's in the arts yeah. district. It's like it was outdoors too. So yeah, it was like, it was like first in union house. house. I'm, I'm gonna have they, to check that. They're, they're it's they're very new. Guys, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah right. It was I'm really, really yeah. sick space. Yeah. Um, really cool. Definitely shout out to them. Oh, that reminds me. By the way, if you're a local act and you have some show. Coming up, that's uh, original local live music. Please let me know. I have a podcast. It's uh, video and audio, depending on the, the platform. It's called Room 6 Radio, and it's basically every Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I put out, hey, here's the local shows for the week, Monday through Sunday. And then interspersed, uh, you know, I, I put in a couple uh, former Room 6 guests live performance up in Room 6. Because I got the content already, so yeah. <laughs> but but it's it's another way of me saying here's all these shows that I'm not going to because I I just can't go to all, them all, especially like first Friday when there's ten of them or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but I haven't heard of Union House yet. I haven't seen anything where someone's playing it. So yes, and and acts, please post your freaking flyers. <laughs> but yeah, hit me up and and, and uh, send me you know some information about hey we got I got this show and on such and such date. Um, I just need to know basically by 7 p.m. the previous Saturday from the week I'm I'm talking about. Cool. Uh, mm-hmm. Favorite show memory? I think we, was that it? Everybody? I liked Ruben's house show. That was a cool. We did it at uh, G's buddy or their buddy Ruben's house. He's a DJ, mm-hmm. and but he has a nice house, and it was like <laughs> the space we were in was super tiny, so like barely the drum set fit and. <laughs> the guitars and in there like and stuff. Island, but much. it was nice because, mm-hmm. you know, there was no time constraints. You know, we were the only band, so we got to play all our songs. and That's kind of nice. like that. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was, it was like more relaxed. Showcase, like, yeah, it was like an yeah. intro, like, yeah. get some, like, us. pictures. And... It was all close friends and family. Yeah. Cool. All right. Last question. You made it. Yay. I asked this of all my prey. Let's pretend we're talking to little you. Okay, we're talking to a new musician. Someone is like, how do I be like you? You know, <laughs> How do I get to do that? What I really want to know is, and this is we're, we're going back to that first question about your earliest musical influence. What is something that you wish someone had told you before you went down this twisted road that is music? And don't say change your strengths. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd say definitely never stop trying. Don't give up. Uh, I've definitely at the beginning of my career had like the whole ups and downs, especially I know my dad at first was very like against it. He was like, well, this isn't a real job. And I'm like, yeah, but I like it. So I'm going to keep doing it. Um, And I think it wasn't until he saw me play live for the first time. He was like, right. I can see you doing it. You do have a day job though. Yeah. Still. Yeah. yeah. But if if you think you can do it and you know, you want to do it then just keep doing it. Honestly. Yeah. I mean, look at Nirvana. Dave Grohl has gone on record as saying, none of us could play our stuff. We just <laughs> got in the garage and made shitty music until eventually it stopped being shitty. And then we felt like we could play out. And then we, you know, and then you just keep doing it because we've all been in shows and, and seen shows where you're just like, oh, you're at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you that you're here. <laughs> uh, next. Um, well, that's a good seg- segue to mine. It's just practice. Just keep practicing. Just, when you don't feel like it, practice. And when you do feel like it, practice. It doesn't matter because, yeah, like you were saying, you could tell if someone's new with that. Mm-hmm. But if you've been practicing and, and even if it's your first show, you might not play like it's your first show. People will be like, wow, how long have they been out? <laughs> and yeah, just and if you're in a group, that goes double for the group because, you know, you practice your part at home mm-hmm. but getting together as a group is figuring out the ins and the outs of each song and figuring out okay hey uh that part's not working with what you're doing so it, that's that's important too it's still going okay <laughs> <laughs> <A little laughs> candid moment. Yeah. Yeah. it's done, second time it's done that where it hasn't shut off but for some reason it's it just like <laughs> whatever anyway but yeah rehearsal is not time to practice your part mm-hmm. but 
if you don't practice as a group enough, then you get the shows where one guy is really good. <laughs> yeah. One guy's in, in sync and everybody else is just trying to hang on and, and, and that's even worse. So, uh, Rich? Um, I think a big one is to just like not be afraid to kind of put yourself in like uncomfortable situations, I guess, of like putting yourself out there a bit. Every band, every like other artist, musician I've ever met and ever like played a show with, worked with, whatever, has been like the most supportive people. Um, and that was like a very cool, like this is such a cool feeling of like how like when another band like is like gives you a genuine compliment after a show or something like that. And that's like every like that happens everywhere. Um, there's not a lot to be afraid of. Like even if you just like fucking bomb it and play like dog shit, yeah. like it's still like you got to have those shows. You're not it, like it's not the end of the world, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. The, um, har- the hardest thing to do is take that compliment when you really don't. When you know, it. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, but and and right, don't do that. But like, <laughs> imposter syndrome is real, especially among musicians. But if someone compliments you, just say thank you, because mm-hmm. <laughs> you know it, it just don't ruin their night. Yeah, sorry, did I? No, you're okay. Good. Cool. cool. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being on the channel, guys. Stick around. Like I said, we're gonna see G upstairs doing some. Uh, Acoustic metal? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna catch some music from him, and uh, we'll catch you on the outro. And uh, I guess temporarily we'll say goodbye. Temporarily we'll say goodbye. Peace. This is Project One. I feel like running out on all the lives I've come to love Cause every morning I wake up more alone than I care to be Oh, I don't mean physically, I'm mentally exhausted Can I get those 15 minutes now? Fifteen minutes now, 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 fifteen minutes now. Oneself in this song I don't know how to say All those things stuck in my head I'm certain that all those loves Would gladly help me out of any trouble I find myself in Trying to find my own way out Can I get those 15 minutes now? 15 minutes now 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 This is Project Two.
find myself in these situations where I regress into a dirty, no good son of a bitch. But I can't deny I'm not trying that hard. Though neither are the hands being dealt so far. The life you get is not the one you deserve. Unless that life you've got is one you've conjured. I try, I try to be a better man than I can. Oh, why, why do I fail to see the plan? I find, I find myself doubting everything that's put in front of me as if the project's too complex. Alone in this town is how I feel. Right now I don't know what's the deal Familiar face yet it seems so different As if all of this is already apparent These bad habits of mine need stopping like drinking and smoking And finding these girls who won't ever love me Though the common fault seems to be me I try, I try to fix all of this that I can oh, Why, why do I feel like I should have ran? I find, I find myself doubting everything that's put in front of me As if the project's too complex I want to confess I'm such a damn mess I want to thank Dantes for coming on the show. It was a great interview and an awesome performance by G. If you want to be on the channel, like I said, hit me up. If you want to support the channel, click that Room 6 social media link. Go to room6.shop or uh, click the sponsor link and that will really help me out. Other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, click up there. If you want to hear my own music, which is not like theirs, click over there. And if you want to subscribe, click up there and ring the bell. You know what to do. Really appreciate all of you. Uh, remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time in Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. See you. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba.